my life is a miracle. Every child has a story of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story. Tongue twister, Coco. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Ready? Five frantic frogs fled from fifty fierce fishes. Once more. Ready? Five frantic frogs fled from fifty fierce fishes. Yay! Let's go meet our friend. Let's go meet our friend. Let's go. I've told you about lots of my friends who have helped the poor and sick, haven't I? You sure have. Nearly every one of them did. Almost. But why do you think that is? Why do you think we have so many friends in heaven who showed their love for God by caring for the poor and sick of the world? Hmm. Because... Because they... I don't know. Tell us, Katie. Come on, Coco. You know the answer. I think even the kids know the answer. I think I can hear some of them shouting it to us. Tell me, kids, tell me, please. All right, kids, let's help Coco out, shall we? Who loves us more than anyone else? More than our mum and dad and brothers and sisters and friends? Yes, God does. Does he love only some people or does he love everyone? Yes, God loves everyone. Even the people who are poor and sick? Yes. God wants us especially to love the people who are poor and sick. Does loving them mean helping them and caring for them just like Jesus helped and cared for the poor and sick people? Yes, that's exactly what loving them means. And did you know that one of my friends was asked especially by Jesus to love and care for the poor and sick people of the world? Really? Who was it? Her name is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Maybe some of you kids have heard of her. She lived on Earth a very short time ago, and she is still famous for her mission of charity that is continued in the world today. How did she start it? She originally joined the Sisters of Loreto, but when she was sent to India, she saw the need for a mission focused especially on caring for the millions of people abandoned in the streets, poor, sick, and many dying. Have you ever seen a homeless person? Maybe you've seen someone in the city lying on some cardboard or on the footpath on a bench. They might even have had a hat in front of them. They want people to drop coins in to help them live. Some of you might have helped a hopeless person before, but most of the time we walk past them even though we feel terrible for doing nothing. Well, imagine walking through a city that was so full of homeless people, you couldn't just walk past one and forget about them because they were everywhere. No matter where you went, there were always people lying on, sitting on the footpath, staring out at you, 
some of them begging for help, but others just pleading silently for mercy. For a normal person, this would make you feel guilty and helpless at least, and you would wish there was something you could do to turn those sad stares into happy laughing smiles, like how your face is normally. But for someone who loves Jesus like Mother Teresa, you wouldn't be able to sleep. You would just keep thinking about all those people in the streets and feeling like you weren't just abandoning them, you were abandoning Jesus. You would imagine Jesus suffering on the cross and then realize that in every one of those poor people, Jesus was suffering too. You couldn't let Jesus suffer like that. Seeing all the people suffering was bad enough, but not Jesus. So what did Mother Teresa do? How did she help all those people on her own? But she wasn't on her own, Coco. Jesus wanted to help all those people even more than she did. And one day, he took hold of her heart and gave her his immense thirst for love. And from that day on, Mother Teresa was filled with a desire to satisfy Jesus' thirst for love by loving every single poor, sick person as though it were Jesus himself she were helping. Katie, what do you mean by Jesus' thirst for love? Well, you know what it's like to be really thirsty for water, don't you? Your throat is just so dry and clammy, and maybe you're even hot and exhausted from running or playing. Or oh, flying. When I fly, I get so thirsty sometimes with the wind blowing against me, but luckily I can see far across the ground, so I can go down to the nearest lake or stream to drink. Yeah, see? Even Coco has to take a break from flying to drink. Or have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and you know you can't get back to sleep without drinking water first? And when you finally get the water, you can feel its coolness and freshness gush into your mouth, flow right down your throat, past your chest and finally into your stomach. And you can't get enough of it. Water has never tasted so good before. Are you imagining that? If you can, imagine that feeling times a thousand times a million, times a billion, times infinity. And that's how thirsty Jesus is, not just for water, but for love. For us to accept his love and share it with other people. So how could Mother Teresa not want to satisfy Jesus' powerful thirst by sharing his love with the poor people in the streets who were so unloved by the world? Katie, how can we satisfy Jesus' thirst? Do we have to care for homeless people? I'm glad you asked, Coco. Do you kids want to satisfy Jesus' thirst for love? Even though there are still many people who follow Mother Teresa's example of loving and caring for all the poor people around the world, we aren't all called to spend every day of our lives helping the homeless. Right now, while you're still young, you can imagine that every good thing you do, no matter how small, is like giving Jesus a drink of water or really, a drink of love. So if you clean your room without complaining about it, you're giving a drink to Jesus. If you eat your veggies without groaning about it, you're giving a drink to Jesus. If you help your brother or sister, even though you don't want to, you're giving a drink to Jesus. There are so many things you can do to share Jesus' love with other people, like Mother Teresa did, and give drinks to Jesus. Cock amazing! I'm going to try to give Jesus so many drinks, he'll be full! <laughs> you can certainly try, Coco. But even Mother Teresa never satisfied Jesus' thirst because there were always more people who Jesus wants to share his love with. So did Mother Teresa help people for the rest of her life? Yes, she did. Jesus asked her to be his light in the world. And so she did that as best she could. Like with everything, her mission started out very small, but over time it grew. She welcomed all who wanted to help her share Jesus' love with the poor people. More sisters, brothers, priests, people who weren't called to religious life but still wanted to help, and even people from other religions. Soon, there even started to be missions set up in other countries and cities around the world, all working towards the same goal that Mother Teresa was working towards every day to satisfy Jesus' thirst for love. That's incredible! Everyone must have loved her! Yeah. She was loved by the poor and sick people she helped, by her sisters and community who worked alongside her, and even by the world. 
earning her several special prizes. Although she always knew that the greatest prize of all was Jesus' love, which she would one day receive fully in heaven. But what do you think was the one thing she most needed to succeed and keep going in her work? Money? The money she was given went to good use helping the people, but it wasn't what she most needed. Um, sleep? It probably would have been very exhausting out all day in the streets, but even sleep wasn't what she most needed. What was it then? Can you guess, kids? Yes, prayer. Without continuous prayer, thanking Jesus for everything he had given her and asking for the strength to continue on the mission he had entrusted her with, Mother Teresa knew she would not have been able to do what she was doing, or at least not with so much love and joy and determination. Jesus really was shining through her. How lucky! Can Jesus shine through us too? If we let him. Let's ask St. Teresa of Calcutta to help us let Jesus shine through us like she did. Thank you, St. Teresa of Calcutta, for letting Jesus take a hold of your heart and sharing his love with everyone you met. Help us to accept whatever Jesus wants to give us and to have the strength to offer Jesus drinks of love whenever we can. Please pray for all of the sick and dying and homeless people still in the world today and for all those who have your mission of charity alive and strong in the world today. You're right, Katie. I wasn't disappointed even one little bit. All of your friends are so coco amazing, especially St. Teresa of Calcutta. I wish I could love as much as her. Let's try every day. And you too, kids, you can do it with us. Yeah, high five, Katie. High five. Nice. Shall we do our tongue twister now? Ah, oh, yeah. I've been looking forward to this. Okay, let's try our tongue twister now. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. I thought you like our tongue twisters now, Coco. I like them more and I'm better at them. But I can't do that still hard. Well, I think you're up for the challenge. Any day, try me. Okay, are you ready? It goes like this. A synonym for cinnamon is a cinnamon synonym. We're gonna have to break that, Katie. Yes, we are. Let's try breaking it up in two and then repeat after me. Ready? A synonym for cinnamon. A synonym for cinnamon. Is a cinnamon synonym. Is a cinnamon synonym. Yeah. Let's try it all together very slowly. Yeah. Ready? A, a synonym, synonym for, for cinnamon, cinnamon is, is a cinnamon, cinnamon synonym. Good job, Coco. That is a bit of a challenge, but Katie. It is a bit of a challenge, but you and the kids did so well. Yeah. Shall we make some craft now? Yeah, Katie, let's go make some craft. It's craft time. Are you ready to make craft, Coco? Yep, right, Katie. All right, what do you think I'm gonna make today with this cup and this paper and pom-poms? I don't know, Katie. Well, do you remember how when we were talking about St. Teresa, we were talking about how Jesus was thirsty all the time. He was thirsty for love. And every time we did a good thing, it was like we were giving Jesus a drink of love. Well, today we're going to be making a drink of love. So we're going to be having this cup and then we're gonna make some cut out some love hearts with this red paper. And then every time you do a good thing, you can put inside your cup a love heart and then it will be like giving Jesus a drink of love. How cool is that? Mm, wow, Katie. Yeah, okay, so shall we get started? Yeah. Let's do this then. Okay, so first of all, we've got to do the bit boring part, the cutting. So we're gonna get our pieces of paper. I've got two red pieces of paper here, but I'm gonna I'm going to cut them together maybe to make it a little bit quicker. So we're going to get our pencil and draw some hearts first of all, so we can cut around them. They don't have to be perfect hearts, they don't have to be the same size. They just have to be hearts. Okay, there we go, there's all our hearts drawn. Wow, Katie. Now we're going to cut them out. So you might need some help with this because remember to be very careful with scissors because they're sharp. We're going to cut out our hearts very carefully. Okay, here we go. There we 
go. There's all our hearts cut. Wow, Katie. Yeah, that's wow. amazing. That's so. Uh, that's all represents all our love for Jesus, and He loves us so much more than that. So we can separate all the hearts out like this, and then you can keep them in a special place. And then when you do something good, like what's something good they can do, wow. like helping their mum with something in the house yeah. or being nice, like saying your pleases and thank yous uh, yeah. or cleaning your room when you're asked to without complaining. And every time you do one of the one good thing, you can put your heart into the cup and it's like giving Jesus a drink of love. Now, we don't just want this to be any ordinary cup because it's going to be so special. So we're going to put a bit of decoration on it. I've got some red and white pom-poms here to remind us of love. And we're going to just stick them on the side of the cup with the glue. So we'll get our glue and then we'll stick each pom-pom onto the cup. You can decorate your cup in any way you'd like, but I have chosen to decorate it with pom-poms. So we've got to stick that anywhere on the cup, just randomly. Take a while to stick. Okay, now be very careful with that while it dries. And we're gonna do the rest of them. That's a shiny cup, Katie. It is a pretty shiny cup, isn't it? It's got to be nice and special because it's being used for such a special thing, showing our love for Jesus. I've used a paper cup. You can use whatever cup you like. You could even use a real cup if you're allowed to. You can even make a cup if you'd like. There's two pom-poms. And now we've got the next ones. All right, so there's all our pom-poms stuck on. Remember, you can decorate your cup in however, in a different way if you'd like. And so there's our cup. And so every time we do a good thing, we can put a heart in and we'll be giving a drink to Jesus. So by the end, you'll have all your hearts in. Of course, you'll put them in one or two at a time. We're gonna put them all in like this. And if you run out of hearts, you can just make some more hearts, can't you? By the end, they'll all be inside your cup and you can give it to Jesus offer and then you can offer up all the things that you don't like doing or just like Mother Teresa did because when she helped all the people in Calcutta and she was giving drinks up to Jesus because Jesus was saying I thirst and so now we're trying to satisfy Jesus thirst by giving him lots of love there we go I think he'll like it do you think he'll like it Coco yeah Katie I think so too all right there we go Here's our cup of love. Hi kids, if you'd like extra instructions on how to make this, you can find it at swpals.org. Also, I'd love to see you guys making your own cups of love for Jesus. So you can send in a photo of you with your own and upload it on the same website. Well, this morning I helped out another bird from their nest. That's a good thing. I gave a worm to another bird. That's another good thing. Hmm, but I did pick another bird when he wouldn't get out of my nest. Hmm, that's not so good. But then I said sorry and helped him find his own nest. Oh, that's better. Well, Coco, soon you're going to have a full drink of love for Jesus. Yay! I can't wait. The kids and I are going to make so many drinks of love. Aren't we, kids? Yeah, I can't wait either. Shall we? Do our tongue twister now? Yeah, Katie, yeah, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it! Okay, ready? Repeat after me. A synonym for cinnamon. A synonym for cinnamon. Is a cinnamon synonym. It's a cinnamon synonym! Yeah, let's try it all together now. You ready? Yeah! A synonym for cinnamon is a cinnamon synonym. Perfect! You're amazing! See you later, kids! See you next time, kids. Bye. Saint Teresa of Calcutta, she helps us all when we're in the gutter. Come and play, play with Katie and Coco. That's the way. Get ready, let's go. Flying through the air with Coco. 
telling stories with Katie. You and I together, meeting my friends, friends that help us every day. Katie and Coco, that help us every day. Katie and Coco, play and sing, pray and bring. You and I, we do our thing, it's Katie and Coco.